GI Alliance reports that 20 million Americans suffer from chronic digestive health and gut issues. Digestive diseases necessitate nearly a quarter of all surgical procedures in America, and they're also a prevalent cause of disability in the workforce. Jacob Thurston is on a mission to help people optimize their gut health. He's a holistic and NLP practitioner who helps people optimize their gut health and come out of the suffering that they view as unimaginable. He took some time out to join me this week to talk about how we can make our gut health a top priority and how it affects every other aspect of our health and life in general. I'm Kevin McShan. Let's have this conversation. Yeah, grateful to be here, Kevin. Grateful to be on the show and excited to uh, have a conversation with you about things that I find really, really important and I'm super passionate about. Uh, yeah. Well, get you passionate about it, get your listeners passionate about it because it's something to be excited about. Yeah, absolutely. So let's dive into exactly what you do, buddy. I know you're a holistic practitioner that helps people sort of uh, come out of their suffering. So I'm wondering if we can start our conversation by you telling me about all the great work that you do, Bobby. Yeah, Kevin. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize it, and, and maybe even some of your listeners might not realize. You may not realize, uh, but we all have challenges. And you and I were kind of talking about that before the show. And uh, really, don't let your challenges, you know, dictate your life, but you dictate your challenges, right? You dictate how you handle those challenges and work on those. And so, one of the things that I, what I do, and what I'm passionate about, is helping people with debilitating digestive disorders. Um, so this can be things, and a lot of people aren't even aware this is a real thing. And you'll see sports stars, you'll see um, Hollywood actors have these things sometimes, or actresses. You'll hear about it randomly, but it's so not at the forefront of our society. It's really something that we push aside. And it's, it's things like IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, colitis, which is inflammatory bowel disease, and any of the symptoms that are included in any of those things. So uh, I help people who are in dealing with that and for them it is a debilitating thing and they would never say this with anybody they don't like to talk about it with anybody but uh it it reads back to digestive health and it is ruining their life so i even had conversations today one-on-ones with people i was helping that uh they can't vacation they can't leave their house if they do they have to be prepared that something terrible could happen they live a life of of difficulty and struggle and strain and limitation that most people who are healthy and don't have to think about their digestion, don't even consider as a part of their life. So they are trapped at home, people. I've worked with people who are literally cannot leave their house, haven't been on a vacation in 25 years. I've met people who haven't been able to start relationships and help them do that. I've helped people go on vacation for the first time in 25 years. I've helped people leave their house. Um, I've worked with everything from kids, from you know uh, eight-year-old kids to CEOs of multi-million dollar corporations and companies to uh, reverse their symptoms that are debilitating their life and ruin their life, which is usually along the lines of IBS and IBD, but they're just symptoms of a much greater problem. So that's what I help people do. I help them overcome those debilitating problems and reverse those symptoms so they can live their life and live in freedom. And I know it's important to you, buddy, that uh, you make these conflict uh, issues very simple. So tell me, how do you make these complex issues more relatable to the general public? Sure. I think that people, uh, you can go out and you can research and you can do so much research. I mean, if you look up 
solutions to IBS on Google, you're going to pull up about $2.1 million, or 2, 2 .1 million uh, search operations that are going to come through that, you know? And, and what's going to happen is you're going to research that and you're going to try to find out how to fix this. And what happens for individuals is they get lost in the weeds. It's like a dark rabbit hole. And they try to solve it with this and they try to solve it with that. And I call them quick tips and tricks. Pills, powders, tips, and tricks really are, are the main areas that people try to solve this. And really what they're doing is they are overcomplicating the issue. Then they go to their doctor and the doctor says, you're mechanically all fine. They go get a colonoscopy. Many of your viewers may have done this at some point in their life. But a colonoscopy, endoscopy, for these people, that's something that they think is going to be a lifetime and a lifeline and it doesn't work. So they go and they get all these complicated insane procedures where they take supplements and they take probiotics and they do all of these uh, celery juices and all these crazy things. And, and they, cause they're so desperate, Kevin, they really are. They're so desperate that they want a solution. And have you ever gotten lost in the woods and what's the one thing you don't want to do when you get off the trail and you get lost in the woods, Kevin, you don't want to run, right? That's the last thing. If you're lost in the woods, the last thing you want to start doing is running because guess what's going to happen? You're going to be more lost than when you started. And a lot of people with this problem get in so much survival around the issue. They get in so much survival around the problem. They get so scared and, and that they start running in the woods. And what it does is it overcomplicates the issue and they try a bunch of stuff and blow a bunch of money and blow a bunch of time. Talk 25, 30 years of their life trying to find that solution. And I simplify it, Kevin, in one thing. It is, it's very simple. There's been over 20 years now of solid scientific research and over ten, tens of thousands of research articles that if you have these type of issues with your gut, and gut health is a major thing. They actually think upwards of 100 million people out of the 375 million Americans in the United States deal with these issues. They don't tell anybody, Kevin. They don't say anything to anybody, but they're suffering in silence. They don't say anything because it's an embarrassing topic. Nobody wants to talk about it. You got poop problems. Who wants to talk about that? But 100 million people estimated are suffering. That's, that's greater than one in four. So if you see four people driving in a car, sitting in a car, most likely one of them suffers with digestive uh, issues that are either debilitating or extremely painful or uncomfortable. And so what I do is I just tell people it's simple. It's actually a bacterial issue. So we want to make it this complicated thing. We want to go nuts with it. It's a bacterial issue. And the bacterial issue happens a lot of times around trauma and stress. So we've got to get the bacterial issue because there's the microbiome inside of your gut. You have more cells in your body that are bacteria than human cells, believe it or not. Um, some estimates upwards of 93% of your bacteria of, of cells inside your body are actually other than you. Isn't that crazy? So you're really not even necessarily human. You're a walking, talking city of bacteria. Crazy. And everybody wants to kill bacteria now, which is, I think it's funny because you can't kill bacteria without taking yourself out. And so, and so to simplify this, it's really easy. CBD oil, all these things these people try is just another gimmick. What you need to do is you need to focus on the bacteria inside the gut. It's what creates these symptoms. Tens of thousands of research articles have shown it now. And we know now without a shadow of a doubt, the science is unequivocal that it is based in bacteria. It could be it's some sort of other than you that's causing the issues, a fungus, uh, uh, it could be, it could be a parasite, believe it or not. People think parasites are third world problems. They're not. Uh, we find it all the time. And the people that we work with par like literal living parasites inside their body that they need to deal with. It could be pathogenic. It could be, it could be bacterial. It could be viral. And it's, it's that simple. It's just the bacteria inside the gut. It's the bugs that make up your digestive tract that keep you alive, that keep you moving, keep you, keep you working. And a lot of times there's, there is a, Traumatic event in life, a lot of times, not always, but a traumatic event in life that either happens early and continues to bother the person for a long period of time, and it actually weakens the immune system. Believe it or not, our thoughts, let's have a conversation, right, Kevin? Our thoughts and our feelings affect our health, and they affect our immune system. And when you have these uh, debilitating emotions around life, and I know you've probably had a lot that you've had to work through, what you've gone through, and I know I've had my own challenges that I've had to work through and go through. But when you, when you get locked in these emotions, and you and I could talk about this all day long, when you get locked in these emotions that are debilitating or these emotions, and they're not like they're bad to feel, but when you make it a part of your personality, whether that's anger, whether that's guilt, whether that's grief, whatever that is, it weakens your immune system. 
And when we do that, it opens up the door for these bacteria to take over. So when people come to me simplifying it, we deal with the emotional aspect and we also deal with a bacterial analysis and figuring out what's going on inside the gut so we can reverse the gut while we work on the human being. That makes sense. It, it does, but and you always you also tell me that you have a five step system that you work your clients through. So I'm wondering if you can share about that with me this afternoon. Yeah, so number one for us is uh, the five-step system is really breaking myths, Kevin. So our big approach towards this is that there's so much garbage out there. And I don't mean to downplay anybody who has the stuff or, or you know, sell supplements. There's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to this problem, we're not talking about people that um, want to get a little bit healthier all the time. We're talking about the people who are either debilitated or dealing with really severe issues. So supplements not going to fix that. So number one, my first step with people is to break the myth that supplements are going to reverse their, their digestive issues. So many supplements, Kevin, are 90% uh, unnatural. Uh, I always put it this way, common B1 and, and most supplements is made from coal tar, believe it or not. Made from coal tar. Um, you check your supplements all the time if you can't pronounce it. Uh, B12, you understand, B, everyone understands B vitamins, right, Kevin? You know, B vitamins, B12, B, uh, B3, B6, all of this. Well, B12 in the fo form of cyanocobalamin is made from cyanide. Believe it or not, it's made from cyanide. Um, you, you want methylcobalamin, but still, even then, the, the supplement industry is one shrouded kind of in darkness. Uh, a lot of these supplements are made in a, in a, are really made by the pharmaceutical companies, pharmaceutical organizations, and they're not very healthy at all. Actually, there's a lot of studies to prove that people who use a lot of supplements have a higher risk of cancer, believe it or not. Uh, so the first myth is that taking high amounts of supplements is going to solve the problem. That's really not going to fix the root of the issue. The second thing is that a lot of people will go to their doctor for this, and I believe that everyone should see their physician. Please do not hear me and say that I'm saying don't go to the doctor. That is not what I'm saying at all. You should always have a good doctor on hand and a good physician for you and for your family. The truth is, though, what a lot of people do with these issues is they have a digestive issue, if they even go to the doctor at all, Kevin, because a lot of people won't. They'll have these issues, and they never go to the doctor. If they go to the doctor... The doctor runs something called the colonoscopy. Well, all that is is basically a camera that they use to look around on your insides. And the issue is that that's not going to fix the problem or find out the root of the issue. And many times people will get those studies and those tests. It's the second step in my process. And they, the doctor tells them that they're healthy and they start to think they're crazy. Because I have these symptoms and it's destroying my life. It's ruining my relationship with my husband or wife or my spouse or my significant other. It's ruining my relationship with my kids. I can't go to soccer games. I'm so sick. I'm laying around. I can't do anything. Um, or, or it's ruining their job performance. It's ruining their ability to build their business. All of that. It's destroying their life. Okay. And what will happen, Kevin, is that when that's going on, when they're dealing with that, they go to the doctor and the doctor tells them they're healthy because they had a, a healthy colonoscopy. Well, the colonoscopy is not the problem. I call it confused medicine. It's just, I don't know why this stuff is not, I mean, we have like tens of thousands of research articles, over 20 years of research and science to show that these issues are a bacterial problem, right? But then the GI doesn't understand that. So it's important to get checked with the colonoscopy and make sure you don't have cancer. I will tell you that right now. You need to find out that you don't have colon cancer because colon cancer is the leading cause of, of death in all cancers, Okay. It is the most dangerous form of cancer, and people who have these issues tend to develop that. So we want to make sure with a colonoscopy you don't have that. But after that's said and done, when they tell you you're healthy, which is going to happen 99 times out of 100, what we need to begin to do, okay, is we need to begin to break down what's going on in the bacteria. So we need to, do, we need to test. We need to test the microbiome, and that's my third step, my second step. The third step and the big myth I like to break is called the insanity diets. Many people, when they get these digestive issues, Kevin, they will go and they will do the craziest diets, low FODMAP, keto, vegan, vegetarian, uh, elemental, paleo, uh, you name it, right? We can just keep going, brat diet, all these different things. You can keep going down the list. And it's these insane diets that really are not very balanced. It just is what it is. I mean, if you eat these diets, you're going to be cutting out major food groups. And if you don't know what you're doing, you don't have a professional to help you, it can be very, very dangerous for your overall health, actually detrimental, um, because you're not getting certain nutrients and you don't know what nutrients you're not getting. You're not working with a professional or a practitioner to help you walk through that. 
So the big thing is we got to get off of these crazy supplement protocols. You got to get, you got to stop that because they can hurt you. Number three, and number two, you've got to realize the doctor is not going to have the answer for you because they're missing the major science. And number three is to get off these crazy diets and supplement and, and these insane diets that are not going to help. And you've got to find out what's going on inside the gut. Once you break through that, once you find out what's going on inside the gut, then you can make specific changes, Kevin, to help with your specific issue. Because it could be thousands of different things that are going on inside your gut. It could be a combination of two or three or four different things that are causing your specific struggles with these issues. Number four, my big step, is that you've got to get real with yourself. The truth is, is that the bacteria inside your gut dictate your entire health. 93% of the neurotransmitters that you produce uh, for your brain health, for good, feeling good, serotonin, melatonin, GABA, um, all of these really dopamine, all these really amazing neuro neurotransmitters are produced by the gut bacteria. That's where they're produced, and then they go up the vagus nerve into the brain, believe it or not. And it's crazy. Like We live in a different world now to understand all this stuff. But what we need to begin to realize is that not only is your mental health affected by your gut, but your overall health, your immune system and your inflammation response is affected by these bacteria inside your gut. And if you have these symptoms where you're hurting and you're in pain, or you're dealing with bloating, or you're dealing with acid reflux, or you're dealing with uncontrollable bowel movements, or you can't go to the bathroom, what we need to begin to, to, to really understand, Kevin, is that, is that this is not okay. It's not okay. It is dangerous. It is bad for your health. You've got to get real because a lot of people will think, well, I'm fine. It's just my digestion. But your digestion, if you cannot break down and assimilate nutrients and you cannot excrete properly, you're in trouble. Any cell that can't do that in the body is going to die. Now, I'm not saying you're going to die tomorrow, but your health is going to wane. You're going to feel sick. You're going to have other stuff come up. I talk to people all the time that end up getting cancer that had gut digestive issues their whole entire life. I talk to people who ended up getting fibromyalgia, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic back pain, all, losing their hair, skin disorders. That all come because they, they had this one gut issue that stemmed out into a thousand different things. So that's number four. And the fifth step for me is getting expert guidance because here's the reality. You can't solve a problem with the same level of mind that created it. You know this, Kevin. I know this. Einstein. That's Einstein. Doing the same thing over and over and over again. I'll quote Einstein again. Doing the same thing over and over and over again and, and expecting different results is insanity. And so what happens is people will go at this and they try to fix it on their own and they try to go out there and do this and get this test and do that. And they're going to do this and they're going to figure it out, but they're coming from it from the same level of mind. They don't have the understanding that you need to fix this. So you need expert guidance. That's my fifth step because how long do you want to continue to suffer with this? Right? So those are my five steps, Kevin. And number one is we got to stop thinking that supplements are the answer because they actually make it worse in most cases. Actually a lot of probiotics, people take probiotics for these issues. And there's been studies to show that 70% of probiotics on the store shelves will either make the situation worse with your digestive issues or not improve it at all. 70%. And the ones that even did help, they didn't take care of the problem. Number two is that we've got to realize that medicine's a little bit confused on this. Western medicine is just on this particular topic. They're great on other areas. This particular topic, they're a little confused as to what's going on right now. Give it 50 years, maybe they'll change. Number three is we got to get off the insanity diets because you're doing stuff that you don't know if it's going to help you in particular. We've got to find out what's going on with your particular gut issues. Number four, we got to get real and honest with ourselves. The gut bacteria dictates the whole health of our body. And if your gut bacteria is messed up and your body's messed up, you're messed up. And number five, you need guidance and expert guidance and support and a strategy from somebody to help you. Those are my five steps that people need to understand and the myths that need to get broken. They think they're going to do it on their own. That's not going to work, right? They think they're going to be fine. They can just deal with this and manage it. It's not going to work. Do some crazy diet. It's not going to work. They think they can go to the doctor. It never works. And they think they could just take a bunch of supplements, and that's not going to work either. Yeah, and, and there you go. I, I wanted to also uh, pick your brain about how emotional eating and gut health are interconnected because, you know, a lot of people, when they, for example, if they experience strategy in their life, they, they go to the refrigerator and sort of max the pain. So I'm curious to ask you about the correlation between emotional eating and gut health and how you think those two things are interconnected. Yeah, so it's a really good question, Kevin. So a lot of us are run by the subconscious. And I always love to demystify the subconscious conversation, Kevin. It's really, really easy to demystify this one. It's not difficult. Um, 
really at the heart of this. The subconscious is just your body. It's really simple. Um, it's just the automatic part of you. So the thing that does things automatically now, the thing that people most, don't, most people don't realize, Kevin, is that 95% of your daily actions are operated out of the subconscious. You ever been driving your car and you drive and you pass a stoplight and you pass another stoplight and you find out that you're like 10 minutes down the road and you realize you were thinking about something for work or for business or you're thinking about a friend or a family member and you go, I don't remember anything about what I just did. I can't believe I'm here alive. You ever have that happen, Kevin? Uh, you, you know what? I think about uh, multitasking all the time. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. And so when you're multitasking, something else takes over. And it's kind of like when you first start driving your car, right? When you you know, chicken cacciatore and you're doing all these crazy, you know, recipes and you feel really good about it. What's happening is the subconscious mind begins to take over. It becomes, it becomes a part of the body. People see this in sports. All day. If you ever played a sport, you know, you can't think about kicking the soccer ball. You just kick the soccer ball. You can't think about hitting the baseball. You just hit the baseball. With this stuff, what happens, it becomes a part of you subconsciously. So when it comes to eating and stress, Kevin, that really is a subconscious thing. So people will do that subconsciously. They don't even know they do it. They aren't even aware. So to even have the awareness, like you just said, is a win, number one. Number two, when we do this and we go and we overeat and we, we, we uh, binge eat food, it's actually very, very detrimental for our gut health. There's a couple reasons why. Number one, most of the time it's because you're eating really bad food. When you're going to binge eat, guess what you're going to eat? You're not going to be eating salad. You're going to binge eat on the ice cream until, you know, the spoon hits the bottom of the container, you know, uh, you know, you're going to, you're going to go out and get burgers or something from the fast food joint. And that food is, is, it can be super detrimental for your, for your gut health for many reasons. There's many things inside of that food that affect the bacteria inside the gut. Many things. And I don't mean that this is not to shame anybody and Hey, you know, we should all be able to go out and enjoy ourselves every once in a while. But, but the truth is, is that those foods in general, eaten on a regular basis, especially with people like you're talking about, Kevin, that have had traumatic events in their life, what they do is they tend to run to food for comfort. And when they run to food for comfort, that is a subconscious thing. They'll eat really bad foods that affect the, the health of the organ of the gut, right? And then, and then number two, when you eat a lot of food all at once and you, you, you binge eat, and you snack all day and you're just in a really bad place, what happens is it actually uh, ruins the motility of your gut because the gut, the small intestine, is kind of like it's got little villi in it like this, and they're basically always moving, moving food through and shuttling food through the small intestine. Well, if this is backed up by a lot of food, let's say you have you eat one piece of food and then another piece of food and another piece of food in your small intestine and they can't, it moves slower and slower and slower, you start to get backed up as food and what begins to happen is you get overgrowth of bacteria. It's super gross to think about, but it's true. It's not really poop yet, but, you know, <laughs> it just is what it is, right? Uh, and so what happens is you start to slow this down, and when this starts to slow down by overeating like that and snacking and doing all these things, you start to get problems with the digestive system, and you start to get overgrowth of bacteria. Food starts to ferment in ways it should not, and you get lots of issues between the small and the large intestine. You get these gut issues, and you start getting gas buildup, bloating, and all of that kind of stuff. And it all stems from this subconscious thing that people will do because they don't even realize it, but at one point in their life, they were going through a really hard time, and the, and the only thing that was the consistent thing is food. All of us know this. What is the one thing that every human has to do every single day? Unless you're fasting. Some people are into that, which is great. But uh, most of us have to eat a meal. And when you are going through really hard times in life, sometimes that creates some certainty in your life. And we all crave a certainty, except uh, the problem with this is that sometimes food and really, really uh, detrimental food for your diet can become a certainty in times of tragedy. But here's the thing about this, Kevin. It's not as easy as just I'm in tragedy because what begins to happen with people is they have a tragic moment in their life and it's not the moment that's the problem, Kevin. Say somebody had something ter terrible happen when they were a child, maybe abuse. It's not the abuse that's the problem. It's actually the 1,000 times a day that that person relives that abuse in their mind. And when that person relives that abuse in their mind over and over and over again, it creates the trauma response in the body just the same as it happening. And when that happens, we start running to food, we start running to alcohol, we start running to sweets, we start running to things to try to comfort us from that trauma. And uh, we have to learn to deal with not only getting the right foods in, but also deal with that, that trauma. Let's just be real. We have, to, we have to deal with a thousand times a day 
somebody replays that event in their head and help them work through that. I work with a lot of people, Kevin, that end up, um, they have these issues and, and they did have uh, childhood molestation. Um, really bad things happen to them and somehow it's manifested in gut issues. So it's a good thing that you bring up. A lot of times it's because they are comfort eating. They're running to food to try to help calm the body down, the nervous system from the trauma that they're reliving every single day. Yeah, absolutely. It's important to uh, keep that in perspective. And, and like you said earlier, get professional help if you need it, for sure. Yes. But, uh, Jacob, I'm also wanting your thoughts on how you uh, take ownership of your gut health and what's your definition of optimizing your health on a grander scale? Sure. So number one with taking, taking ownership of your gut health. Um, to get a couple questions there, Kevin. They're really good. Um, number one, you got to get a you got to get an expert to guide you. I mean, I don't care if it's me or somebody else or somebody who knows what they're doing when it comes to these issues. And it, it's it's pretty hard to find somebody who's going to know what they're doing, but you can. There are people out there, and the best way to tell somebody who knows what they're doing. Number one, they're not just throwing Jello against the wall. Um, they're not just hoping something's going to stick, right? They're really trying to find out what's going on with you individually and get to the get to the root of your unique issues. Okay, so that's that's you need somebody doing that. Number two, they should have some pretty good stories. The problem with this issue is not a lot of people want to talk about it. So sometimes people get transformation with me and they don't want to be on my website. I'm going to be real with you. Helped a lot of people, and uh, I really get somebody going, yeah, sure, let's talk about it. I don't want people to know. The people don't want the to other to others to know that they have these issues, right? Let's just be honest. Um, it's something we don't like to talk about. But, but the ownership is getting guidance and getting somebody who can help you. And those are the two things I would say. Make sure that they are not just telling you, sure, we'll do this protocol and you'll be fine. Or you just do this diet and you'll be all good. But actually finding out what's going on with you. And number two, they've got some pretty darn good stories of people that had suffered for years. Now, you said, what is, uh, what is optimized health in my definition? My definition of optimized health is having the energy and vitality to do what you want, when you want, where you want, how you want, however many times you want. So if you want to go run a marathon, you should be able to go run a marathon. If you want to lift weights and lift as much as you want, you should be able to lift weights as much as you want. If you want to use your body to go on a nice vacation and sit with your butt in the sand and toes in the water drinking a mojito, you should be able to do that. And that's really at the end of the day, Kevin, what I see is optimized health where your body gives you the energy to do what you want when you want. If you didn't get a lot of sleep, it shouldn't matter. You should be able to go throughout your day and, and make, make the day happen. If you got to burn the candle at both ends, for a short amount of time at least, the body should be able to handle that. If you want to go and you want to get fit, physically fit, you should be able to go do that. If you want to learn an instrument, your brain should be able to handle that. If you want to read books, you should be able to handle that. If you, Whatever it is that you want to do, your body should be able to support you in that and not be a hindrance but actually be something that guides you along the way. That, to me, is optimized health, Kim. Yeah, and just a quick follow-up in terms of your own personal view. How, how do you define personal, uh, professional fulfill, fulfillment for yourself personally? Professional fulfillment? Oh, yeah, man. For, yeah, <laughs> for you personally. Uh, my idea of professional fulfillment is, is really solving problems. Uh, and the reason that I say that is because we all have them. But what I do, uh, Kevin, is I help people solve problems that they think are impossible. Um, and the reason that's so fulfilling and that is professional fulfillment for me is because when I can see somebody, Kevin, who thought their life was over, they thought this might be as good as it gets for them. And they break through. And they get a taste of what life really can be like when they get their health and they can live life on their terms. That is the most fulfilling thing on the face of the earth. So to me, overcoming problems for people and for myself and for my business means growth. And growth means that I can contribute to more people. And that is it, man. If you can contribute to people's lives, Kevin, like you're doing in this podcast, if you can help people overcome challenges like I know you have, and when you get that grit and that muscle and you use that to contribute to other people, that is the height of, of professional success. That's all that really matters to me is helping people break through and change their lives because the secret to living really is giving, but you can't give what you don't have. So I always tell people this, look, Kevin, for you, for me, for everybody that's listening to this, the depth of your darkness 
is the height of your light. Say that again because it's profound. The depth of your darkness is the height of your light. It doesn't mean that you just overcome it. What it means is that your light shines, and your light shines in the darkness for other people. And when I say that your light shines in the darkness for other people, I mean that the pain and the hardship and the torment that you went through, you use that. You use that experience to help other people get out of their pain. And that's, I had a mentor tell me one time and, and say this, and it's amazing, it's profound. He was talking to a group of us, and he's just an incredible guy, been through a lot, cured himself of cancer, been through hell and high water and, and business and everything that you could possibly imagine. It was a very successful individual. And a lot of people get this thing called imposter syndrome, right? And he was saying, and imposter syndrome just means that you're going out to help people, like I just said, and you want to contribute, but you think, who's going to listen to me? Who's going to do this? Who, who's really going to be there? And like, really, am I going to be able to help? And one thing he said was, it's kind of like if you're in the quicksand with a bunch of your friends or family and you're in the quicksand and you're sinking and you find a rope to get out of that quicksand and you pull yourself up out of that rope. Are you going to look at the people who are in that quicksand and about to die? And before you help them, go make sure you take a shower and shave and make sure you look nice. And before you go out and help them, no. You're going to tell them where the, where the rope is. And if you don't tell them where the rope is, that's on you. And so people don't care if you just got out of it or if you're in the midst of it and you're overcoming it slowly by, by slowly by slowly by slowly. People don't care. They just need help. People just need help. And if you overcome something, utilize that. Utilize your knowledge and wisdom to help other people. So that's, that's my idea of professional success, helping others. Yeah, it's all about paying it forward, isn't it? Amen. Yeah, yep. And Jacob, one of the big things that's important to me in life is celebrating wins. You know, I always like to take life into perspective and celebrate what we've accomplished and use it as fuel uh, to accomplish more. So mm -hmm. in that context, how do you think you personally celebrate the personal wins that you have in your own life? That's a great question, Kevin. Um, what I do personally is I have a journal in every single day. Um, I write down, I take a page, two pages. I start one at the front and one at the back. And I write down what I'm grateful for every morning. Every morning I do this. Um, I write down what I'm grateful for. And then in the back of the journal, I flip it over and I have something called a brag book. Um, and this brag book, it's something I learned from a really powerful coach that worked with Tony Robbins. And I was getting coached from. And the brag book is just for you. It's just for you. You don't need to do this. You don't share this with anybody. And in that brag book, you write down everything that you're proud of or you can, I say, take joy in about your life. I don't care if it was from helping the little old lady across the street to saving somebody's life in a car accident to helping somebody break through medical issues or you overcame something or, you know, you, you overcame a disease or a condition or you worked hard and you started lifting from 10 pounds to 50 pounds on the, on the, on the curls, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter to me what it is. I find something to, to celebrate about myself every single morning as a part of my morning rituals. And that's how I do that. I find what I'm grateful for. And then I take a moment and I look back on my success in my life. And it doesn't matter if it was running the touchdown, the winning touchdown for the game in middle school, or if it was, uh, if it was, you know, helping a little lady out to the car with her groceries when I used to work in a grocery store when I was a kid, you know, it doesn't matter. I write it down because that's just me remembering who I really am and celebrating that. Yeah, absolutely. And just out of uh, personal curiosity, buddy, I know I see that bookcase behind you and I know you're an avid reader. So tell me, uh, do you have a favorite book, and what do you like to read, Bon? Uh, well, I, uh, favorite book, that's, well, that's a loaded question, my friend. Um, right now, I'm reading something called The Great Books of the Western World. Okay. So uh, that's a group of books put together by Chicago University in the 50s, and it's a part of something called The Great Conversation. That's one of the bulk of what you see behind me. Um, and it's books from Socrates and Plato and... Um, and uh, like right now, I'm reading Plutarch. He's in, most people don't even know about Plutarch, but it's like the second most read book in, next to the Bible during the Revolutionary War in the 1700s. It was like the most 
our founding fathers that found this country, they, they read Plutarch's lives up and down. Um, and it's all about all of these great leaders like Alexander the Great and Caesar and all this crazy stuff. Um, so that's what I'm reading right now. As a favorite book, <laughs> Kevin, that's a hard one. Um, I would have to say that probably the book that has made the most impact on my life um, and, and continues to do so, um, I have to say, is, is the Bible. I mean, I know that's, that's like a, you know, I don't want you to throw something away, and I'm not telling people what to believe. That's not my job here. I'm not saying that's my job, but um, it's been one of the most impactful books of my life to read, um, and I still try to read it as much as I possibly can and just fill myself on the wisdom and knowledge that comes from, from that. So that's probably, the, I would say, if you're going to pick the most impactful, uh, but, uh, but I'm always reading and growing, and it's not always just philosophy, even though philosophy is really important. Um, for all of us to do, because because your philosophy is not a hairy fairy thing. You should you should know your philosophy, what you believe, and why. Um, but I'm always reading different business books. Different. Um, I've got a list under here of a bunch of books from um, Harvard Business School that they recommend. You know, um, so I'm always reading. Always got books on the shelf. I'm trying to burn through. You know. You yeah, well, uh, Jacob. I always <laughs> say the minute you uh, close your mind off to learning is the day that to die. So I always try. To to get 1% better every day. And I, I like that. I, I've always said that, that you learn more by listening than by talking, right? Yeah, amen, man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, uh, so just before this started, Jacob, you shared with me that you uh, were spe spending some time with the family and the kids this weekend. So mm -hmm. tell me, when you look at your life, what sort of blindness did you want to leave for the people that are most important to you? Mm, yeah, I think the big thing for me, Kevin, that's a great question. Uh, the big, biggest legacy that I want to leave uh, with my son and with anybody that I work with is that problems are a part of life, and we bargain for them when we came here. I really believe that. I believe that just coming here to Earth as a soul and as a human being, um, we bargain for the problems that we face. But you really are the one that decides if those problems are going to make you or break you. And anything that I give to anybody would be problems are the gifts that we grow from. And then secondly, number two behind that would be, uh, would be what my good friend uh, Socrates says, which is that we should pursue virtue, which to him was just humility. Like you said, don't close your mind off. Don't think you know it all. Be humble, be teachable, and seek to do good to other people. We should do that above pursuing our own reputation and money. Now, from that virtue will flow all kinds of money, all kinds of reputation. It's beautiful. But once you put money and reputation to other people above that virtue is the day that you die. That's the day that you give it in and you sell your soul. And so those would be my two things. I'd probably problems are the gifts we grow from and pursue virtue above all else. That'd be the legacy I'd want to leave. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, tell me if people want to get connected with it, Jacob. What's the best and most efficient way they can do that? Yeah, jacobthurston.com is our website. That's a great place to go. Um, you can also look us up on Facebook, uh, Optimized Health, and you'll see my face plastered all over there. Um, and you can message us through there. But the best place to go is jacobthurston.com forward slash masterclass. What that's going to be, Kevin, is uh, we talked a little bit about the five shifts. In that masterclass, I'm going to outline exactly what people have used um, to, to overcome these digestive issues. So jacobthurston.com forward slash masterclass. Uh, it will, it's a free presentation. It's free training. We share stories. We tell real life stories and talk about how people implemented the five shifts I talked about earlier, what they did, how they did it, what happened. And we walk you through that process in detail. I have so much time here with you today, Kevin. I couldn't share it all, but um, we have a really de detailed presentation. You're going to get all the information that you need there at jacobthurston.com forward slash masterclass. But you can also go to jacobthurston.com, go right there, and you can click a link and, and, and access our free training there as well. Fantastic. Well, Jacob, I really enjoyed this uh, insightful and in-depth conversation about optimizing 
God help, Bonnie. I want to thank you for being here and for your work in the space, Bonnie. It's most appreciated. Thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate you, man. And uh, your grit and your tenacity is inspiring to every single person that listens to this podcast. I saw your story. You sent that to me and uh, uh, really inspired by you. So thank you for running this and doing this and, and stepping up to share the truth.